We've talked about this already, but now we're going to formally look at finding the area underneath the curve between two points. It'll always find the area between the curve and the x-axis, and as we go further, we'll talk about some of the issues about the negative area when it's below and the positive area when it's above. But it's defined by that definite integral. So, if we want to find the area enclosed by the line y equals 2x minus 1, the x-axis, and x equals 1 and x equals 5, well, we can do the integral. So if we start with a sketch, 2x minus 1 would have a y-intercept of minus 1, a slope of 2 up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. There's our line, and we want to find it between x equals 1, so that's at the point 1 comma 1, and 5. Take a fancy crayon, Ooh, purple this time. And we want to find that area. Now this is one when you look at it, you could use just regular rectangles and triangles to find that area, but the definite integral says that if we want to find the integral between 1 and 5 of 2x minus 1 dx, that will equal, and with the definite integral, remember we put those square brackets and still list the 1 to 5. We don't have to do the plus c with the definite integral. Plug in 5, 25 minus 5, plug in 1, 1 minus 1, final area would be 20. So although we could find this one with rectangles and triangles, we find that Finding it with the definite integral isn't that much more work, and the fact that you can do it with any function makes it even nicer. So here's the first one that we would have where find the area enclosed by the curve, and the curve is a parabola. So our normal formulas wouldn't work. How do we graph a parabola quickly? I might rewrite that parabola as negative 2x squared plus 15. It would have a vertex at 0, 15. And it would go over 1, down 2, over 1, down 6. I could also, if I would like to, label my x-intercepts. How do I find an x-intercept? Set y equal to 0. Plus or minus the square root of 7.5. Which, if you were to estimate that, would be somewhere between 2 and 3. The reason I wanted to find that is because we want to find this area underneath the curve between negative 2 and 2. And so we can set up our indefinite integral again, or sorry, definite integral. Plug in 2, plug in negative 2,
and we get 60 minus 32 over 3. If we change this to 180 over 3, we would end with 148 over 3. Again, since that's a nice fraction, this might be a nice one that check with our graphing calculator to see if that's what actually happens. So we can go to y equals, graph that original function in there. So we had 15 minus 2x squared. which if you have your standard window actually goes up and beyond. So if we want to set our window to go up to 20 for our y maximum, we could see the top of that parabola. And then second, calculate the integral from negative 2 to 2 shade it in nicely for us and give us 49.33. If I go second answer on my screen, it'll give that answer. Change it back to a fraction and what do you know, it is the same number. Whew. So this is a good example of one where the shape is not something that we would have easily been able to figure out the area from. The next example is the same thing. You've got the graph of cos x plus 1, and you want to find the area from 0 to pi. So again, all of those graphing skills that you did in grades 10, 11, and 12 really come in handy because if you know what the graph looks like, so we have a cos graph shifted up one unit, that means it would have your sinusoidal axis at 1, have a maximum of 2, cos starts at a maximum, period is 2 pi, split that into four equal sections, and it would go maximum, center line, minimum, center line, maximum. So here's our cos graph, and we're wanting to find the area from 0 to 1. Again, not an easy shape to do otherwise, but if we set up our definite integral, cos x plus 1 dx, integral of cos, positive or negative sign? Positive sign plus x, plug in 1 or from 0 to pi, sorry. Oh, that is a good save. Plug in pi, plug in 0. And then think of your memorized values. What is sine of pi? 0, sine is your y-coordinate. So this just becomes pi, and sine of 0 is 0, and 0 plus 0, and something minus 0, pi minus, oh, look at that. We just get pi. Again, really cool. I mean... So when I, I mean, pi is a cool number. Pi has always been a cool number. But now when I look at this area, if I was trying to estimate it, what's neat here is can you see that this rectangle there would have a height of 1 and a length of pi over 2? So that area would be pi over 2. 
And since the whole area is pi, that means that this area is equal to the other two areas combined. How could you figure that out without calculus? Cut it in pieces. Anybody see? I'm going to, oh, more fun crayon. I'm going to recolor this section here in purple. And I'm going to take that purple section. Rotate it. Does it make sense that it would fit perfectly there? Because of symmetry, this little part should equal that little part. And if I did that and rearranged it, I would get a rectangle with a height of 2 and a length of pi over 2, so we could see that the area is pi that way as well. Which it's kind of disappointing, because then we wouldn't have needed the definite integral to figure this one out. But we might not have been able to think about that had we not known the answer to begin with. Had I not said, oh, this little square is pi over 2, so that means the other parts are, oh, I could just take that and rotate it. Sometimes you see things that you might not have seen otherwise just by getting an answer and reflecting on it. I think that's cool. If you're asked to find the area of a function and everything is below the x-axis, the definite integral will always give a negative answer. So depending on the wording of the question, sometimes you have to say, I'm going to find the definite integral and then put it in absolute value bars to make that value positive, because if it's asking for an area between the curve and the x-axis, it's asking for a positive area, whether or not that area is above or below the axis. So here, in this case, we still have the line 2x minus 1, which we had graphed before. And if we were finding the area between negative 4 and negative 1, this whole area right here is below. I should have reminded you to bring crayons. Um, I know I've been saying it often, how enjoyable it is to color with the crayons on the smart board. So at the end of the lesson, we'll pull up a coloring page, and all of us are going to get a chance to color with crayons. So it'll be, now I, I hope you're not getting too excited for the lesson to end. We we'll still have some more math to learn, but we will color at the end. We'll have to pick a, a good coloring theme. But in this case, when I find the integral from negative 4 to negative 1, of 2x minus 1, whoops, jumping the gun a little bit here. Our integral will be x squared minus x, plug in negative 1. 1 minus a negative 1, plug in a negative 4, 16, all right, positive 16 when it's squared, 16 plus 4, we get 2 minus 20, which is negative 18. Now that negative 18 is telling us that that area is below the x-axis. So depending on how you set up your equation, sometimes you don't realize your answer was below the x-axis until the end. The question asks for the area. So if you ended the question 
with a statement and had that statement as a positive value, that would be fine. If you wanted to go back and put absolute value bars around your whole question, and then go and make it positive to make you feel better, you can. But the statement that I wrote would have done that as well. So you can either add those absolute value bars all the way to say, oh, I should have made this positive. Or you could just write a statement in the end that shows that you know that that area needs to be positive as well. So we looked at situations where the entire area is positive, And we've looked at situations where the entire area is negative. What's that? Uh, this question didn't have any units sometimes. If you wanted to write units squared, you could. You, I always, when I'm done a question, look, was there units in the question to begin with to make sure I don't forget them. But there wasn't in this one. So we've looked at questions where the entire area is positive, questions where the entire area is negative. And what's coming up next are questions that have part of it positive, part of it negative. So what's going to be the key thing is finding out where does it switch from positive to negative. And we have one of our properties of integrals. We might have to break things up, calculate the negative part separate and the positive part separate so we can figure out the entire area. Because if you just do from one value to another, it'll automatically add and subtract things and you won't know what the actual area is. So here's our steps for doing this. We need to find the x-intercepts, because the x-intercepts indicate where things are below the x-axis and above the x-axis. Once you've found that x-intercept, that x-intercept is going to separate your integral. So you can find the negative part separate and the positive part separate. You make all your negative parts positive, and then you could add them up to find the actual area between the curve and the x-axis. So we've been doing some equations so far. We'll draw a sketch of this one. x squared plus 4x. If I was graphing that, I would probably factor it. And find out that I have an x-intercept at 0 and one at negative 4. And because those are both of my x-intercepts, I know that my vertex is going to be at negative 2. If I plug in negative 2 into that equation, I get negative 2, negative 4. So my parabola is going up like this. And I want to find the area between negative 2 and 2. So that would be up here, I would have the point 2 comma 12. Take out the crayon, feel like that color. That brown part is positive, whereas this red part is negative. So when we're figuring out the integral, if I would do the integral from negative 2 to positive 2, the positive and negative part would cancel each other out. So if I want to find the actual area between that, add the red part and the brown part together, I'm going to need to separate it. I know I have that x-intercept at 0, so I'm going to find one integral from negative 2 to 0 of x squared plus 4x dx, and then add the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared plus 4x dx. Since I drew the picture, I already know which part's going to be negative. The part from negative 2 to 0 is going to be negative. 
So if I wanted to, right from the beginning, I could put absolute value bars around that section to make it positive. The integral of this is going to be x cubed over 3 plus 4x squared over 2. So we have it here from negative 2 to 0, plus we have the same thing, simplify that, from 0 to 2. And again, I may add absolute value bars around that one. That's going to equal, first one, something minus something, plus the second one, something minus something. I sometimes make my brackets at the beginning just to remind myself what I need to do. I might even then add those absolute value bars to say, inside the green absolute value bars represents the first part. Now, plugging in 0 is nice and easy. 0 plus 0, plugging in negative 2, this will be negative 8 thirds plus 16 over 2. And on the right hand side, plugging in 2, 8 over 3 plus 8 minus 0 plus 0 would be 0. I'm going to keep those absolute value bars. I'm going to get a common denominator of 6 here. So I'd have 48 over 6 minus 16 over 6 would give me 32 over 6 multiplied by the negative. Oh, I probably didn't need to go over 6. Right? That simplifies down to 16 over 3. Okay? And over on the right hand side, this is a positive number. I could get 8 over the 3 plus 8 would be 32 over 3. Once you apply the absolute value, so this is a negative number, it would become positive. And the total area is going to be 48 over 3. Some things that you can do on your calculator to cheat a little bit, okay? Because if I type this into my calculator, okay, first of all, well, I'm not going. I'm not going to complete. I'm going to cheat right at the beginning. Okay. I'm going to type this into my calculator, x squared plus 4x, but I'm going to put it in absolute value bars. So if I go to math and over to absolute value number one on number and write x squared plus 4x, Let's try that again. Absolute value, x squared plus 4x. And I graph that. What does that do? Boop. Boop. It just reflects whatever was negative above. And now if I find the area between negative 2 and 2, there's no negative areas. Can you see that it will make this part a positive area, and then add this part as a positive area. And we should get 48 over 3, oh, which simplifies to 16. Drum roll. I'm, I feel like I'm due for a mistake where we get an answer that's totally different. But let's try it. Second, calculate. Number 7, integral from negative 2 to 2. Ah, oh, it's 16. We didn't make a mistake. 
It worked. But you could also use your calculator to check the different parts. Should negative 2 to 0 be what the value that I got? Should 0 to 2 be the value that I got? And I find that it's really nice if you have a resource that helps you check things, but you're still trying to do everything mathematically on your own as well. And that did simplify to 16, so, which is, look at the picture. It's a perfect number. It's all curvy. And it came out to 16. Duh. That kind of bothers me. Because that makes me think there's got to be, maybe there's some other trick that we could see to figure out that that's 16. Because it works out so nice, but I don't see any tricks right now. But it's such a nice number. Ah. OK, sorry. Again, the sketch part is probably the most important. So how do we graph x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x? You could use calculus. Okay. You could use grade 12. Do you know the basic shape of an x cubed graph? Right? If it's positive, the basic shape of an x cubed graph goes something like this. So I'm going to use grade 12 math first. In grade 12 math, what you did if you were going to sketch y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x, you first said, I know what the shape looks like generally. I know that at the end, it goes down to the left, up to the right. Then you found your x-intercepts by factoring. So you say, oh, I could factor out a common factor of x, and I could factor that again to be x minus 2, x minus 1. So my x-intercepts are at 0, 2, and at 1. Zero, one, and two. And the general shape would need to go through those points and go down to the left, up to the right. We would still probably find our x-intercepts if we were using calculus. What would calculus also help us find? Calculus would have helped us find this maximum and this minimum. And we could have sketched it that way as well. But we know that for area between the curve and the x-axis, we need our x-intercepts anyways. So using the grade 12 sort of sketch for graphing made more sense in this case. Now we want to find the area up to 3. Can you see that you have? Two positive areas. I'll color in the positive ones. Oh, blue. No, yeah, OK, blue. No, I don't like blue. It's got to be mustard. Positive ones are in that color. Negative's always red, right? You've got two positive areas and one negative area. So again, we would have to split this up, okay? Show you some nice ways to write this quicker. Equals, the area is going to equal the integral from 0 to 1. 
And instead of writing all of this out dx, are you OK if I write out y dx? Because all of that's equal to y. Plus 1 to 2 of y dx plus 2 to 3 of y dx. Can you see the three different sections? And can you see that I would need to make this section positive? Now, actually, finding, stay green, the integral from 0 to 1 plus the integral from 1 to 2 plus the integral from 2 to 3. Each of them, it's going to be x to the 4 over 4 minus x cubed plus x squared, x to the 4 over 4 minus x cubed plus x squared, x to the 4 over 4 minus x cubed plus x squared. And the middle one is going to give us a negative answer, so we put absolute value bars around it. equals, first one minus this one, plus the second one minus something, plus the third one, oh my goodness. <gasps> I think my spacing of brackets maybe wasn't the best. I, I think the last one is running out of space. So I'm going to attempt to space my brackets better. minus that one, plus, plus, OK, my bracket still maybe didn't, good. Why did I leave it such a tiny little bracket at the beginning? Because it's going to be 0, OK? Um, I'm also going to put these absolute value bars around these ones. Just to visualize, I make sure everything is where it was from before. If I plug in 1, I'm going to get 1 quarter minus 1 plus 1 minus, plug in 0, 0. That's why I left so much space for that one. If I plug in 2, I'm going to get 16 over 4, which would be 4 minus 8 plus 4, okay, minus plug in 1. The nice thing about when you have to plug in 1 again, can you see that you've already plugged in 1? And if you've already plugged in 1 and you look at that, can I simplify that at all? That's just going to be 1 quarter. May as well save myself the time. And then when I plug in 3, I'm going to get 81 over 4 minus 27 plus 9. But this one I've already done. What happens when I plug in 2? I get 0. And so I've got, from the first ones, just 1 quarter plus, put my absolute value bar still there. From my second ones, I'm going to get negative 1 quarter. And from my third ones, 81 over 4 minus 18, 18 is 72 over 4, 81 minus 72, 9 over 4, yes? Did I make a mental math mistake? I think we're good.
this one now becomes positive, and the entire area should be 11 over 4. Yes? So, or, okay, so what Ethan is saying as another idea, I'll do it in black here, or the area, he's saying, figure out the area from 0 to 3 of y dx, that'll automatically subtract that. So then if you add this back twice, can you see that that would work, plus 2 of the integral from 1 to 2 of y dx, and this, of course, would have to be positive. Because if I do the whole thing from 0 to 3, the red part would have been subtracted. If I add the red part back twice, the first time I add it back, it compensates for the time that it was subtracted. And the second time I add it back, it actually puts it in there like I would like. What does that do for us? It's one less integral. Okay. But as far as time saving goes, it looks like I, I thought the same thing. Ooh, that would be quicker. But if you look at the values you have to plug in, you have to plug in 0 and 3, 1 and 2. And so you end up having to get the same, even though you're doing it more often here, it's repetitive here. You get to do some twice and just steal the answer from before. So it doesn't save as much time as it initially appears. Nice. OK. We must be close. Is that the last one? Yes. So we need to decide on a coloring theme. OK? All right, so Jillian's first. You come up, grab a pen. If you can't reach, you might have to jump. You grab a pen, click on the pen thing up there, and then click on crayon, and then choose your color. These smiles, just, it just feels good. I thought that was going to be a green apple, but that's OK. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> if you use your imagination, you can actually smell the wax while you're coloring. All right, pass the pen on. We'll go down the rolls. Then you click on the pen, then click on crayon. I think you're going to watch this later. It's very therapeutic. Just like I'm trying to watch just the screen and like, oh, nice. It will be. It's going to get, it's going to go viral. <laughs> So grab a pen, click on the pen. Yeah. Harder. Nope. Nope. That's what you do. Yeah. Then you have to click crayon. Yeah. And then pick a color. Purple.
up to you. I know you want to. <laughs> Jess is up. Now, while someone else is coloring, you can think about what we actually learned in math today so you don't leave class and go, what did you do in math? We just colored. <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs> There are more colors. There you go. You choose your color now. If you click on the color palette, like here, you could pick any color. First, click on the pen. Click on the pen first, choose crayon, and then you can choose any color from the color palette or choose one that's there. You, it's you. You can be. It's your creativity here. Uh oh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm guessing pink grapefruit. This also tells me who, you know, whose parents put them in coloring lessons on Saturdays when they were in elementary school and whose didn't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That is white. You can even hit more if you want even more colors. So, define, there you go. And you can grab it anywhere in there. And then you can, there you go. No, that's that's nice. Yeah. 
So you could tell he had been waiting and hoping that the biggest thing to color was the bowl. He was like, nobody picked the bowl, nobody picked the bowl. Luckily, we have no idea what color that was. Oh, recent colors. Take that one. What are you doing? Okay. Pick crayon. Pick crayon. Pick there. Pick recent colors. Now try. You can do whatever you like. black grapes aren't. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing like coloring with a dotted line. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> oh, I better I have to, I should color something. What? Oh, what should I color? What should I color? Uh oh. Did it freeze? No. Perfect. 